Legion, just uh, Benavides, who was the co-headliner tonight, uh, fought really well the first half, clearly won the fight, but seemed to fade a little bit down the stretch. And what'd you make of his performance? Well, um, I've been in this position before. You know, I glorified Benavides and I openly predicted a knockout victory for Benavides. And in the early rounds, I thought that was what I was going to see. Yep. Uh, and then he seemed to fade a little bit in the face of fighting a really good, experienced veteran fighter uh, with a lot to fight for in, in his own right. Uh, and in a new weight class where he had not functioned before, maybe the seven pounds made a difference in how heavy David's punches were. Uh, and he wound up uh, having to weather the, the sort of temporary storm and go away with the decision victory. I covered Mike Tyson at a moment early in his career when the entire nation was given to believe that he was an indomitable knockout sensation who would knock out every single opponent that he faced. And then I watched him go the distance with James Quick, Till James Quick Tillis. And I watched him go the distance with Mitch Blood Green. And I watched him go the distance with James Bone Crusher Smith. And I watched him go the distance with Tony Tucker. And I learned the hard way that no matter how much I imagine somebody's going to knock out every opponent with dynamic punching, people have a way of being able to slow all of that down. Eventually, I called Buster Douglas beating Mike Tyson. So nobody is so perfect that they're always going to do this every single time out. But 28 knockouts in 30 fights, that's impressive. Do, do you think he slowed enough in the second half that Canelo saw what he saw enough that okay I'm gonna take that fight now um, so, and the 28 knockouts and 30 fights was Davis. a reference to uh, Tank Davis right did did Benavides slow enough in the second half of the fight to make Canelo say okay actually bring him down seven pounds and let's do it after all well I certainly think he slowed enough in the second half of the fight to create a situation where Canelo will want to examine the money and see exactly how much it's going to be worth to him to go in and take whatever risk is inherent in fighting David Benavides. And maybe after looking at him tonight, he's going to think there's no risk at all. I'm Canelo Alvarez. I have the most proven punch resistance, chin if you want to call it that, in the sport. He's not going to hurt me. I mean, I think there's a, an opportunity here for Canelo to think exactly that based on what he saw tonight. Is Canelo a bigger puncher than Alexander Bust? I think he is. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there are a lot of ways for Canelo to look at this and say, ah, I'm, I'm a favorite over David Benavides. I certainly think that Benavides, if he doesn't get a fight with Canelo, he's an underdog against Dimitri Bivol. Well, that was, like, my, that was my last one point. Yeah. yeah if he sticks around this weight class, does he beat He's Bivol? an underdog against Dimitri Bivol, and we're not even going to talk about better BF. So uh, the bottom line is um, David Benavides' options are now somewhat limited based on what we saw tonight. And I think, you know, for giant money, he's got to hope that um, Canelo Alvarez will change his mind and decide to fight him. That he liked what he saw. Right. That he liked what he saw from a 168 pound fighter who moved up to 175 and didn't have as much pop as a lot of people expected, including me. And me, no, you know, yeah. it's okay, Jim. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Jim. I always really look forward to your insights on a fighter like Davis, who we weren't able to see in HBO. And so I'm always curious to hear what you think of these guys. Uh, you know, yeah, well, stuff. again, my first ecstatic review until I was reeled in by smart old friends around me was a young Roberto Duran. Amazing power and amazing athletic quality. Thank you, Jim. Thank you.